Hello everybody, it's Jay Roby. I found out that the Washington Post canceled their chess column that was written diligently by Grandmaster Lubomir Kavalek for 24 years. This news was disheartening for a number of reasons, not only because I'm a fan of chess, but because as each year rolls by, the media seems to narrow their offerings more and more, opting to focus on flashy headlines like scandals, crimes, superstars, or even worse, sometimes their own personal agendas. You only need to turn on your TV or hit your favorite news site to see just how much negativity and sensationalism, you know, is in the media today. Now, we all know that stuff like that sells, but you know what? It's also important to maintain a healthy range of topics. And as a media consumer, sometimes we need to remind the media organizations of that fact. So I've written the Washington Post an email asking them to get Mr. Kovalec's online column back um, as part of their online publication. Now, who is Mr. Kovalec? Well, let me tell you while we go through one of his chess games. In this game that we're going to look at, he defeated the former world chess champion Anatoly Karpov. Mr. Kavalek is a Czech-American chess player, and he obtained his Grandmaster title in 1965. Now, Mr. Kavalek has devoted much of his life for the great game of chess. He has coached, organized, commentated, and written about the great game that we all love. In fact, he's an award-winning author and columnist. Now, Kavalek has a number of notable achievements in chess, including winning the championship of Czechoslovakia in 1962 and 1968. And while he was playing chess in Poland in 1968, Russian tanks roared into his homeland. Now, as an anti-communist, Kavalek decided to defect to the West to live a life of freedom in a democratic country. The story goes that after he placed second in the tournament, he bought a bunch of vodka with his prize money, used it to bribe some border guards, and then went to Germany. And in 1970, he moved to the United States of America and Washington. Washington, D.C. and became a United States citizen. Now, Kavalek played in a number of chess Olympiads, playing for Czechoslovakia in 1964, 1966, and the U.S. many times, helping his teams take home a number of medals. He was the co-winner of the 1973 U.S. Chess Championship and the sole winner of that tournament in 1978. He then went on to win the West German Championship in 1981. Now, along with playing, Kavalek also trained a number of famous chess players, including Grandmaster Nigel Short. Now, he retired from playing chess in 1999, but he was ranked 95th overall in the world, which is not a small accomplishment. And in terms of chess literature, he has given so much to the game that we love. He was the editor-in-chief of chess publishing for RHM Press in New York from 1973 to 1986, and then he had his chess column with the Washington Post from 1986 right up until January of this year when the Post decided to cancel his online column. Now, surely an organization that has the scope and influence and resources like the Washington Post can continue to publish Mr. Kavalek's articles online. Uh, many publications continue to provide chess articles to their readers, such as Dylan McLean's online chess column, Gambit, from the New York Times online. Now, I emailed the Washington Post asking them to reverse their decision to cancel Mr. Kavalek's online chess column, and I'm asking all of my subscribers to do the same. I posted what I sent them on my blog along with their email, which I'll also include in this video, and I encourage you to just take a couple minutes and send them an email and let them know that columns like Mr. Kovalex are appreciated and valued by those of us in the chess community. And feel free to post what you send them in the comments section below. So take care. I hope you found this video worthwhile and we'll see you next time.